This episode of TRS is brought to you by HostGator. Today on the show, we wrap up our epic daily coverage of E3. up the band is playing us out as we speak it's actually a live orchestra playing yes, right now that's what happens when you come to e3 we're gonna have our picks for the best game of the show at the end of the show so be sure to stick around for that but first let's cover what we saw today a lot of stuff we started the day checking out prey 2 which is a game that i criticize a lot because it literally has nothing to do with prey 1 but prey 1 wasn't a game i loved and it really seems like they're doing some very interesting stuff with Prey 2. Oh yeah, this is a game that looks and plays like I wished I could have played when I first saw Blade Runner. The location is amazing, it's this great sort of broken down, they call it sci-fi noir. I'm surprised that he actually didn't say we love Blade Runner in the thing. He got about as close as he could possibly say to. without being sued. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's great, it's got a really cool um, chase mechanic, you're this bounty hunter, um, yeah, open very, world, very which the first game was not. based on Prey. I mean, they sort of said, like, the guy who's who's the lead character in Prey, you kind of meet him sort of once. Yeah. That thing he alluded to. It's a little bit like saying that the Lord of the Rings game we saw last year is, like, based on the books. <laughs> it's based on a line that was spoken in the books. <laughs> yeah, you mean yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Looks like a much a big improvement over the first game, in my opinion. It's got that qui uh, id 4 tech, which still looks really sharp, I think. I thought and it looked great. I thought it looked really I great. agree, yeah. even though, you know, Rage is the new version of the id tech. This is, yeah. engine still holds up, and it's got all that traversal stuff that's really fun. It looks, you know, it's got parkour -y. It really is a combination of all the things I love, period. A, the, the setting, the idea that the story is you're a U.S. Marshal on an airplane that gets abducted by aliens, like, that is a freaking awesome... Yeah. sci-fi concept and yep. then you're saying traver running through running being able to slide and shoot at the same time you don't slide and then get up and shoot you're sliding and shooting or you're holding on the ledges and then the ledge. pulling your gun up and shooting exactly cool. and you're yeah. a bounty hunter you're not like fighting an army of guys you're like chasing one person you have to locate them and then a foot chase breaks out and it's foot chase with jumping and sliding and you know all and awesome gadgets and hover yeah. boots hover, hover boots, boots. You awesome. had me at hover boots. Really? I mean, actually, we had they had Dan before hover boots. <laughs> and then they, yeah. and then they gave boots, us hover boots. And his pants flew <laughs> yeah. out of the window. So. Then we went over to Ubisoft and checked out the Ubisoft games. Chief among them, of course, you have to say Assassin's Creed. That's the marquee title. Uh, I know you're uh, less excited about this Assassin's Creed. I thought it looked fantastic. I think well, it looks. I just I, I love Assassin's Creed. So yeah, it's, it's nothing uh, beyond what I'm already getting from Assassin's Creed. Yeah, you know, now you have a hooked blade instead of a straight about, blade. It's, yeah. hard, it's hard to get excited about more of the same. Well, it looks like you Not can that there's craft. Anything wrong with it. You can craft bombs and grenades now, which is cool. Uh, you know, it's still got the Brotherhood aspect to it. I like Constantinople. Seems like an interesting yeah. setting and I'm ships and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of this whole... I haven't really had my mind blown by any of the games. I don't really enjoy them very much. And I know I'm in the minority. I get it. That's cool. Right. It's just not my thing. Uh, so with this, it's the same thing. It's like another thing that I know I'll probably play and not really get behind. Well, the other thing at the Ubi booth that, that we played that I had a grin on my face the entire time I was playing it, just a giddy, silly grin, is the new Rayman game, Rayman Origins, which is now a 2D, side-scrolling, hand-illustrated, yeah. beautiful, gorgeous game that brings the whimsy. Four-player co-op, which was really great. Oh, yeah, and yeah. silly. It's got that no. new Super Mario Brothers. Four-player co-op that was great when it, you play with somebody who doesn't smack you in the face yes. all the time. It's got that, probably yeah. just fine. It's got that new Super Mario Brothers yeah. thing where you can help and hurt fun. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where you're bumping into each other, and as long as one person stays alive, they bubble up. It's very new Super Mario Brothers. But the art style, I think, brings it into a whole new stratosphere. As you, as you guys know, I love next-gen old-school games. Yeah. I love next-gen platforming. I don't need it to be 3D and whatever. Yeah. I love this game. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm so excited it's to play it. I mean, it's so fun. 
Yeah, and this is definitely one of those things down. that, yeah, it's definitely one of those things that whenever you come over, it's like, well, let's just play a little bit of that, yeah. well, you know. Yeah. I love Rayman, my friend had uh, on his PlayStation, and he hated it, and, but I, I didn't have a PlayStation. I went, I had yeah. to go over his house and like convince him to play, or like when he went down to get dinner or whatever, I would like be like playing his Rayman. I love Rayman, I love yeah. that beautiful art style. Yeah. And the music is always great, and you can kind of hear the music in this game sounding pretty cool, it's pretty loud. Yeah, E3, and E3 is but, definitely yeah. not the place to get full auditory enjoyment at right. most of these demos. Right. Yeah. And we saw Call of War, a new Call of War, which I thought they really shouldn't have shown. It's not ready yeah. in any way. I kind of like it. I mean, really? I, kind of like, I mean, I agree, wow. it's not ready. Um, and it feels half baked, but I loved like fighting Mexican cartels and like yeah, we were like this like super SWAT like fighting drug dealers in yeah Mexico Tijuana or something. Yeah, I it really cool. it really underwhelmed me. I, I, I mean, I didn't like it. How just it just didn't seem shot. anywhere close yeah. to being presentable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, don't disagree we'll see. with that, but. And then we went over to EA. Spent a Tintin. Oh, Ubisoft. Tintin. Yeah, I love to talk about Tintin. I loved it. You're the only one, I yeah, think. Yeah, you are the really only one. Really gonna get anything out Not of it? It's clearly for kids. And it, and it's got a, 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 I like the art style. It's got yeah. a, a, a crisp, fun art style. When you punch a guy out, I mean, it's a brawler, side-scrolling brawler. Uh, when it's you punch like a guy out, I don't know, it seems Yeah, like they're like the cartoony puzzly. leg in the air, twizzles, you know. Yeah, it, twizzles. Remi it first reminded me of Shadow Complex, twizzles, you know. which, is, which as you guys know is a game I love, but because it's got that 3D platforming thing. But then it seems like every level sort of have a, has a mind of its own, and they all seem very clever and pu pu there's a lot of puzzle solving in it, yeah. and the music was beautiful, and, the, and the, visually it was beautiful. So, okay. all right. I'm glad you, you like you it. Yeah. You can play it. <laughs> then we went over to EA and uh, spent a lot of time there. Oh, yeah. Let's start with Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 is gorgeous. It looks like they're really delivering on that promise of it being at a bigger scale, more epic than all the, than the previous two games in yeah. the series. It's that final war that the two games have been leading up yeah. to. It's that climax of a trilogy, and I think from what they showed us, they really are oh, yeah. showing, bringing that huge war. Yes, most definitely, and, and really upping the emotional stakes. They showed a little segment with a boy that was yeah. just like, what, that just happened like there. Uh, really like the, what they've done with the combat. Feels like the combat is way more sort of solid and heavy hitting. Whereas before it always felt like it was more about the sort of magic-y stuff and the bullets were just sort of there. Um, but I, I, too, I feel like it, that was, I feel like there was such a massive improvement on the combat between Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 1. And I feel like with this, it seems like it's the same thing as Mass Effect because they had like nailed it in Mass Effect. Because he's yeah. talking about how we're using all that, we really increasing. I'm like, wow, like you don't really need to go that much further than Mass Effect 2 because it, it did the combat so well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, this to me I'm more excited about. Also, they showed uh, one of the things where you would actually change your weapon around in the world, which I thought was huge because, of course, one of the big problems I had with Mass Effect 2 was they took out all of the RPG elements uh, well, as, as far, far as, as guns. inventory. Yeah, 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 yeah. which is I didn't get a, I didn't point. see any proof I know. That, that that's this actually is, back. I, I know, yeah. and that's the place where my, my uh-oh meter goes because if that doesn't come back, that was really a big problem for me in Mass Effect 2 because I felt like I was only playing half of an RPG and that, I mean, it really was a big issue for me and I ended up stopping Mass Effect 2 halfway through because I was like, I don't, there's no loot system, there's no, that yeah. stuff, without that stuff it just feels like I'm playing Heavy Rain, which is a, a cool thing, but. Oh, we also yeah. saw Need for Speed, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, like Assassin's Creed, I felt like Mass Effect 3 was more of the same that I love, so whatever, but that end, I mean, that's the thing, it's like, it's yeah. nothing like Heavy Rain in that. I mean, Heavy Rain doesn't have action sequences the way Mass Effect has no, action no, no, sequences. No, 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 yeah. You know I mean? But the sto but as you mentioned, that kid, I literally got chills. I literally got yeah. choked up. I've never gotten the way, and I was in public, and I literally got choked Great up. Great music, by the Woo! way. Yeah. Yeah. And so Basically then, a rip of a Coldplay song, but Yeah, but still, but awesome. good use of a rip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Need for Speed The Run uh, is an interesting addition to the Need for Speed series because it's definitely got this action film quality to it. It is a racer at its core, but it's definitely got a, uh, you know, set piece moments and storytelling. You're a guy who's trying to get from one coast to the other. You take cars, you get out of cars. He's at less than 10% of the game. Yeah, which is good because that was a question mark, which yeah, is how and much I think, is off the game. I think that, uh, for my money, what they showed of the guy out of the car excited me, but I wish it had felt a little more dynamic. It seems to be very QTE-centric, and I, I would love for it to feel more like Mirror's Edge. 
without any guns. Just have me running, trying to get around things, under things, running from the cops. That would yeah. be great. Or, and then get into a car and turn into a car game. Or like like a car racing game, but on foot for a second. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. still that kind of almost uh, almost like LA Noir's foot chase. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I I would say this is less of a racer, more of a chaser. Hey-o! Hey-o! Manism. It looks so exciting to me. This is my favorite. I love, that's why I love Most Wanted. And yeah. I believe this is the team from the original Most Wanted. And I love that, like, just out running and chasing down, and it's not a lapse of the same thing yeah, over and over definitely. again. definitely. And I love those those foot race things, even if they're just interactive cutscenes, because it, it just feels like it's a thrill. It feels like I'm always engaged, I'm always amped up, and it feels like split sec, like, doing the, excite, upping the excitement factor and yeah. the, high concept set piece factor that was in split second without it being like I'm triggering explosions and yeah. and like it feels like it's, it's really much more cinematic and storytelling well, they in said a chase as opposed to just What they wanted you to do with, while you're getting out of the car was no more cutscenes. so you don't right. have to like play a race, play a race, oh, oh yeah, okay, put the right. thing down and watch the story unfold and that I think is really cool. This is not a game for me though, I mean I'm, this is just not my cup of tea but it well, looked amazing. We, we saw Battlefield 3 which I think is one of the most impressive looking shooters I've ever seen. Uh, what we had hands on with was the multiplayer, but I know we're all less multiplayer centric gamers than we are single player, and what they showed at the press conference and in other areas has me so excited for the single player aspects of Battlefield 3 yeah. because it's exactly what Call of Duty isn't, which is, seems like they're really going for realism, getting me in that real military experience, and the graphics look yeah. real to me. I, yeah. I, I am blown away by this game. I love that they're putting it out on the PC and making that the forefront. They know their roots. We played the multiplayer on the PC. Yeah. What did you think? I mean, it was great. It was it was a Battlefield game on PC. I mean, you know, that's not what I do multiplayer-wise. Um, I might have a much better experience playing the multiplayer of Battlefield 3 on an Xbox, just because I've now sort of transitioned over to being a guy who plays the multiplayer stuff on an Xbox. There's a bunch of PC so getting, people yelling at you right no, now. No, well, but so g going back to a PC is a little bit like you PC people attempting to take up a Xbox controller and have a success. But it's, it's interesting how the levels work out. It, there's like three stages into a level D. four or five, yeah. Yeah, and you, and you start in this big wide open area, then go into a tunnel, then come out into another wide open it's area. It's gorgeous. Just Destructible environments happening yeah, I, all around you. The destructibility really more inside multiplayer yeah. really blew my mind. I was I was out of the gate trying to find cover, and then a tank blew up a palm tree, and also the palm tree was like falling on me, and it blocked yeah. or my path. Buildings, like, yeah. sections of buildings yeah. falling, yeah, yeah. and man, this it just is an looks amazing, so good. amazing game. Yeah. All right, I've made you wait long enough. We yeah. can start. We can talk about Star Wars: The Old Republic. Well, they talked. They, they showed a lot of stuff in the Old Republic demo. Um, they talked about uh, operations, which is going to be their raids. Um, mo many high-level characters doing complex missions, which I thought is a great addition. Was wondering if that was going to come in. They talked about crafting, so it's going to be, I think, more of a an MMO world element than people were initially thinking. Thinking it was going to be more of a sort of linear path that a lot of people were taking simultaneously. But you got hands-on with a mid-level character, like a mid-30s, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's a 20s. little unfortunate. I mean, this is the biggest problem with MMOs which is how do you get somebody activated to play a character that they're supposed to be months and months and months of living with this character before you, I sat down. It was a level 26, it was on Tatooine. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff was great there. The, the story of missions, the way that you got missions, all that interaction, as I said to you guys before, um, you know, it's not these long drawn out conversations like you would see in some of the big Bioware things per little, Really, quest. you like that? Because I, I, I was, I thought the way you get the quest is, I'm gonna tell you the thing. Do you want to hear more? Yes, I do. Or no, I don't. Or yeah, tell me. That you might know, have been get, way. Because that, I, we didn't get any of that. It, we we had a whole conversation. It feels very superficial to me. What did you think, Dan? Um, so I, 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 I came away from this feeling like this is less an MMORPG and more an RPG MMO. In that it really feels like it's a role-playing game. Yeah, it's not a chaser. Like multiplayer online. <laughs> yeah, and a chaser because when you chase down those Jedi's, <laughs> yeah. um, because it really felt. I mean, I was a little bit remiss that the combat is very MMO, is very it's number pushing. It's not now that we played DC Universe Online and what's the other one recently that had more interactive combat? Terra, I think was the well, one. Terra does. Yes. Um, 
So I, I kind of felt like, wow, the cool thing, uh, like it might as well be frost and flame as yeah. opposed to my Jedi, whatever, it's if a I'm skin. just hitting buttons. I mean, yeah. it's literally it, like there's a there's a tank and he behaves the way tanks always have exactly. always behaved, always, forever. So the, And the way to give me the joy of feeling like I'm in the Star Wars, you know, I'm in, it's my saga this time, as I kept saying, would be to have, give me more control. But I, I will say that being a Jedi and I, Lifted a thing and threw it at a per I mean, that is it, cool. it did it did kind of fulfill some of that, and it really felt because of those cutscenes, it felt more like an RPG than an MMO. No, um, my biggest issue, but I don't disagree that you're right. It is somewhat superficial. My my biggest issue with the whole thing and why I was hanging my hat the graphics on this are great too. is yeah. that. They were gonna. They were gonna show us a section where he's like, "I'm gonna show you a decision you have to make to either kill yes. someone or not kill them, yeah, yeah. and you're gonna see both sides of how it plays out." Yes. And how does it play out? Well, later you on you meet him, him and he goes, "Hey, thanks for not killing me." Yeah, right. That's it. Yeah, and they yeah. don't show like, you no, what you get out come of, on. of killing him. Exactly. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. completely superficial, and I hope that's not indicative of the entire game. Yeah. But if they're gonna show us something that's gonna yeah. prove to me. Why not show me something that's like opens up a whole nother area or, or, or he somebody starts to sell stuff? Some to other you. guy comes and offers you a quest because you killed him. Right, yeah, yeah. None of that happens. Yeah. It's a real disappointing. Well, we, none of that happened in that one instance that they showed. Yeah. Uh, we showed we saw uh, aliens colonial marines from Sega, yeah. which kind of looks Very like disappointing. a disappointing. Regular old uh, first person shooter with it's space it. we marines. Just, we borrowed so much from that yeah. uh, movie. I know the uh, which video he games took five minutes that, to explain. Speaking, but it is cool that it's aliens. And Speaking yeah. of games that have borrowed a lot from that, we finished the day with Halo Anniversary right. Edition. The thing. Wow, yeah. does it look really nice on the 360 hardware. And it's so cool that they let you swap back and forth yeah. between the old graphics and the new graphics anytime on the fly. Yeah. So you can see how it used to look and yeah. how. It's almost like they're showing off. They're like, look how much we well, did. And seriously, <laughs> that's what they were doing because they literally, what they did was they, the Halo engine is literally running the game the old Xbox game is running and then on top of that a whole other engine is running that's just making it look better yeah mind blowing it's really beautiful biggest it's really disappointment great. in Alex's little heart <laughs> i was so excited about this i've been so so excited about this whole thing and then they tell us that all the multiplayer is just reach for the, the reach multiplayer engine. It's basically they put it, they put a lot of different things on this disc, and one of them is is the entire reach multiplayer engine. So when you're you're not actually playing the old Halo multiplayer, Which, you're playing way, those maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah but in the maps yeah. are not the reason why I've been lamenting Halo right. from Halo 2 on that they changed what I loved about the multiplayer. So to just give me the old maps that I used to love but and I think, give me all of the same BS that I don't like about new Halo. The, the, but I think you're in the minority there. I think most I know, people are excited. No, I know, but I was excited that yeah. they, they were talking to me. I mean, you know. I'm really excited about this. I think it looks great. I will I'm, definitely get it. Seeing those old places that I've been to many, many, I mean, I've played and through that game on Legendary. And see, online co-op. Uh, online co-op, yeah. yeah. It's great. It's worth a buy, but. Yeah. So stay tuned. After this sponsor, we're going to come back and tell you our favorite game or two of the show. Uh, it's been a great week at E3 with you guys. Yeah. I have to thank Mike, who has been yes. amazing getting these episodes out every yes, night. So you definitely. can see up-to-date E3 coverage. Thanks for sticking they around. They have to thank Mike. And they should thank him, too, with yeah. like gifts. Birthday <laughs> cakes in the mail. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, next week, back to regular episodes of the Totally Rad Show. We got movies. I think people are going to be happy that we're going to finally talk about X-Men, right. First yeah. Class, and lots more. So uh, we'll see you then. The fists are out. All right, everybody, be sure to stick around for this day in rad history. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Host Gator. Looking for a place to launch your blog or website? Question mark. I am frustrated with customer support at your current so hosting provider? Question mark. <laughs> well, go with Host Gator and get up and running in minutes with plans starting at just four ninety five a month. You get top rated twenty four seven customer support, Ooh. access to tools including a website builder with over 4,000 templates. HostGator will even migrate your current site for free. Uh, <laughs> servers are 130% powered by wind energy. Yes, that's more what? than they need, but they put it back into the juice box. I don't know what that <laughs> they means. They do, actually. They put it's it back completely into the, green sensual. web hosting. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, uh, 30% to the juice box. <laughs> Bing! Uh, <laughs> unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, 45 day money back guarantee, uh, $100 of Google AdWords credit to market your website. Really right nice now, for Revision 3 viewers, Host Gator is offering 25% off your order or your first month of hosting 
free. <laughs> uh, go to hostgator.com and enter the code totally rad show. It's a very descriptive code. <laughs> uh, so go to uh, 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 hostgator.com, totally rad show, at checkout, get your discount. Please Do it. You. That was fun. E3 was crazy. I'm, it's, I'm uh, it's over. tired and let's go to sleep. Today is June 10th, 2011, and that means E3 is over. Crazy. And on this day in rad history, we're going to name our favorite. Daniel, what is your favorite game or two of E3? Go. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, I, Journey is one, and the other would be Prey Two. Alex. Interesting that he says that because uh, I was gonna say that surprisingly it's not Old Republic. Very surprised. I don't I don't think that was the best yeah. showing for me. Uh, but I'm gonna say it's a toss up between uh, Modern Warfare Three, which I wish wow. I could go home and play right now. Okay. And Prey Two. Wow. Yeah, Prey 2 does look good. It's, I was tempted oh, to go with that. <laughs> but now you forced my hand. You forced your hand. I have, say to say, I have to say Batman and Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, those I, would be my others, so I'm bad. Yeah, <laughs> well, I only said those because you guys said my <laughs> others. Yeah. But I, all, I, 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 you know, I have to say that... Uh, but we should, if we, we that, said Prey 2, we could go give him an award. I think, yeah. yeah, we should. We should yeah. Yeah. I would Best say, of E3. Man, Prey 2, huge surprise. Other big surprise we can all agree on is Saints Row. Yes. Definitely. But there's so much excited. In a different way. Favorite hardware? Vita, Wii U, Connect. I don't even think I have one. I yeah, really, I'm not honestly, I'm yeah. under. I, I think the Vita's I'm under one yeah. yeah. All right, we're out. Peace. We don't do that, remember? We don't do that. I just did this. Somehow we'll get through it all, but I don't know how, because there's so much to get through. We're just going to slice a piece of the cake. <laughs> Wow! Oh, this is a this is video games. Uh, said, oh, boo! <laughs> Look how great their bushies are. That's it. Wee -wee.